Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Hutan Choki. It's a pleasure, uh, everyone here. Today, we have a quarterly uh, webinar for patients who want to learn about various plastic surgery procedures. And um, today, we're going to talk about lips, surgical and non surgical treatments. Uh, uh, we're going to save questions at the end, um, but feel free to send a question via chat and we'll try to get to as many as, as, as possible. Um, without further ado, let's get started with the presentation. And as always, you know, follow us on social media, uh, sign up to our newsletters, uh, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions. So lips, um, you know, uh, as, please no photographs or video. This is recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube. You can watch uh, at a later time. And as a standard uh, disclosure, we don't have any financial relationships with any of these uh, companies. We do a lot of things off label. And this presentation is really opinion only. It's only for education uh, as patients have a lot of questions. Uh, a little bit about me. I grew up in the Chicago area uh, and went to undergraduate at Northwestern in engineering and then medical school at University of Illinois. And then went to New York for training in surgery and head and neck surgery and facial plastic surgery. And then we moved uh, here. Our, pri our private practice is uh, just walking distance from the White House here in Washington, DC. And this is our team at Potomac Plastic Surgery. Lauren and Tanya are our patient coordinators. Uh, Rachel and Gabrielle are our nurse injectors and they assist, we, assist me with minor procedures and Janet helps uh, manage the practice. While we do a lot of things in the face, nose and eyes, today we're gonna to focus just on the lips and region around the mouth. And patients have various concerns. They may feel their lips are thin or small or long, or they have wrinkles or shadows around their mouth. And they wanna look natural. And that's the most important thing. And, and that's what we achieve, you know, subtle and natural results. And the causes for Issues around the mouth or lip are multifactorial, as with anything. Genetics are, plays a bit, big role, but also um, anything involving the, the bone structure of the face and teeth, the jaws. Age, as we get older, we'll show you a picture in a minute of how the face changes over time around the lips. Sun damage, and especially lifestyle, uh, smoking in particular. Here's an example to show you how when you're younger, your whole face is just fuller. The upper lip is shorter. There's more definition in the lip line. As we get older, our lips flatten. Our, our upper lip in particular gets longer and rolls inward towards the teeth. We lose bone in our teeth and jaws, and we start to get surface irregularities and color discrepancies on the, on the skin as well. So when patients come and see us, we evaluate not just the skin, but the bone, the fat, the muscle, and we identified their proportions. And there was a research study that they looked at ideal proportions of the lips. And quite honestly, you know, every lip uh, can be considered attractive and beautiful. But in this research study, they show that a one-to-one -one ratio of the upper lip and lower lip is considered ideal. In some patients, the lower lip may be a little larger than the upper lip, and that's still considered very ideal. So what are the options? Well, we have a menu of options, but generally the non-surgical and surgical, and we'll go over these uh, in a minute, step-by-step. Step. The first is a peel. A peel we could do just around the lips and mouth or the full face, and that helps for the superficial skin wrinkles to improve texture and tightening, reduce color disparities, and here's a patient before and immediately after she had a full face peel. And the peels we do here are medium depth peel. Um, let me show you here. Okay, let me show you. Oh, the screen's not sharing. Okay, let me go here. Sorry about that. Let me go share screen. There we go. How's this? Now you, now you should be able to see my screen. Sorry about that. Let's go back here. Here. This is before and after, um, immediately after a, a chemical peel. And 
Uh, we do a medium depth, depth peel that addresses the superficial lines and wrinkles. And this is one week after. Her, her lips, her white lip, smoother. Her lines and shadows around her are smoother. And downtime is usually about a week or so for our, our peels. Another thing we can do is relaxers. Uh, we call them relaxers, but the different brands are Botox, Dysport, Juveau, Zeomin, and they relax the muscles around the lips. Some patients have a gummy smile. When they smile, it really pulls up the upper lip. Smoker's lines, these vertical lines around the lips, or there's something called a lip flip, or if you have a downturn lip, and that can affect uh, uh, appearance. These are the injection areas for each of these particular treatments, whether it's a gummy smile, smoker's lines, a lip flip or downturn lip. And we do a very, you know, these Botox and similar uh, treatments relax muscles. We're very conservative. But here's an example, a patient who reports they don't like their gummy smile. So a couple injections around the nose helps treat that. Or if you have a smoker's lines around the lip, whether, whether you are or not a smoker, these lines can develop, partly from sun damage. Uh, judicial use of uh, relaxers can help soften those lines. Or let's say you're happy with your lip, but you just want a little bit more fullness, and that fullness in the lip hides when you smile, kind of rolls in. Well, there you're a good candidate for a lip flip, where a couple injections of, of, of relaxer on the lip line can help kind of unfurl that. Now, relaxers are temporary. You know, the relax results from relaxers tend to be more subtle. And uh, if you want a more dramatic change, then we, we look at fillers. Fillers are soft gel. They're made of hyaluronic acid. And they're different brands, such as Juvederm, Ristolin, Versa, new one, uh, RHA. There are more coming down the line. And this is more focused rejuvenation, whether it's the upper lip, lower lip, or the lines and shadows around the lip. And there's a, you know, we kind of view fillers as a kind of a buildup phase. It may be just one treatment, but you know, in many patients, it's a few treatments over time to build up to full correction. The advantages, it's, a, you know, you could test drive it before surgery. These fillers, they can be dissolved. Your body gradually dissolves them and metabolizes them over time. They're minimally invasive. We'll show you a couple pictures immediately after fillers. So you can see the degree of bruising and swelling if it occurs. Um, pretty fast recovery, and we could fine tune. We could spot treat certain areas with, with filler. And these are generally the areas in shaded blue where we treat with filler. The smile lines around the mouth, the upper lip, the red lip, and the creases in the chin and side of the chin. Some patients want a subtle change. They may be happy with their lip, but they just want a little bit more hydration, a little bit more fullness. They may have an event coming up that they want to, to accentuate their lips a little bit. And we can do that subtly with fillers. Here's another example of a patient who was who wanted a little bit more red show of her upper lip. Her, her upper lip has elongated uh, with age, but she, she lost that kind of youthful appearance that she had when she was younger. So this we did a uh, filler. And usually one injection may be enough, sometimes more than one. Here's another example of lip filler where we added a uh, filler along the red part of the lip to uh, try to roll out the lip and create more volume and definition. When we examine patients, it's not just a static, uh, but we look at them smiling, puckering. We look at them at various angles because we want natural results. This is another patient who had a filler treatment in the upper and lower lip. Now here's an example immediately after. You can see she has a little bit of a whitish area. That's numbing medication. We use, we use various methods to make patients comfortable, whether it's with creams or numbing injections, so that patients are very uh, comfortable during the treatment. But this is immediately after, and you can see she really doesn't have a lot of bruising or swelling. And this is another example of a patient immediately after um, lip filler, both in the upper and lower lip. Well, what about fat? Uh, so as a facial plastic surgeon, fat is an option. Uh, I take fat from the waist, the hips, the thighs, wherever really fat, uh, where patients have fat. And patients, some patients like fat because it's natural. It's not synthetic, like a filler 
or relaxes are, and it provides, I feel more of a global rejuvenation. So when I do fat, I'm not just doing one area, I'm doing multiple areas at once. And that may include underneath the eyes, the cheeks, in addition to the lips and smile lines. And this fat is smooth. Uh, it, you know, I take it with my hand, I gently process it and inject it right at the time of harvest to create a smooth result. So it's different than fat transfer that may occur for the breast or buttocks. The advantages of fat over filler is that it's natural. It's potentially longer lasting and we could do multiple areas at once. The other added benefit is potential where there's still being research done on it is that there's stem cells in the fat that could create a, a rejuvenating effect beyond the actual fat itself. So here's some examples of a fat transfer. And this patient just had fat transfer before and after. And this is you know, maybe a month, a couple months after treatment. And we treated her lip, her red part of the lip, as well as some volume around the lips. And you can see when she in repose and when she's puckering, her lips look her normal self. Uh, here's a more typical patient uh, uh, who has fat transfer. Here we did a global rejuvenation. We did her lips, but in addition, her cheeks, her under eyes, so that she looks refreshed. And then some patients really, you know, because they're afraid of fillers or they've had fillers and didn't give them the result they want, they may be a candidate for lip lift surgery. Lip lip surgery uh, removes some skin from the upper lip because keep in mind, the upper lip gets longer with age. Some patients have a long lip to begin with and their red lip is rolled in towards their teeth. And this kind of unfurls or helps show the red lip more. And the degree of change largely depends on how much skin we remove. And some patients want more conservative changes. This is a patient a couple months after upper lip lift and she has more red lip show and the scar is barely visible. And the scars fade with time. We haven't had a patient uh, complain about a scar after a lip lift uh, surgery. Here's a more dramatic change before and after of a lip lift. And, uh, Patients typically can be older because they have a longer lip, but they, you know, younger patients can be candidates if appropriate. And you know, we go through a process to evaluate if the patient's appropriate for lip lift surgery. But what about combination? Uh, you know, that we do commonly, whether it's a relaxer with Botox injections and then filler at the same time, or a peel and a filler, or fat transfer and and lip lift. You know, we have to at the end of the day we. You know, every patient's different. We, we speak with patients to determine what's the appropriate option. So what's the best thing for the lip? At the end of the day, there is no best thing. You know, by and far, probably most what's most popular are fillers for the lip. But keep in mind, some patients may transition to surgery as appropriate and then come back for fillers to tweak or maintain their surgery results. And, you know, we examine patients, go through how much recovery time you have, uh, what is your medical history, how much change do you want to see? And, and at the end of the day, we choose together with the patients what's their ideal procedure. I want to thank our team. In particular, make sure you follow us on social media. You know, uh, I'm Facelift MD, and we have our two uh, awesome nurses, uh, District Beauty RN and Gab Major Aesthetics, who can help treat you, and they're experts in the lip treatments as well. Thank you. And now... I have our team working in the background and uh, we will answer, answer questions that you may have. Type them in and we'll, we'll, we'll get them individually. So one question here we have is, can you improve symmetry? Good question, yes. With, uh, with Treatment, you can improve symmetry to various degrees. We always tell patients the face is always symmetric. And even if we try to improve symmetry to the best of our ability, there's always a degree of asymmetry that may persist. And with fillers or Botox, well, when filler is a better example, we typically treat the upper lip and lower lip, but we can only, for some patients, we may decide to only treat the upper lip or only treat the lower lip or give a little bit more in the upper lip, or give a little bit more on the right side or left side. Yes, of course, we can always improve symmetry. 
Another question is how should we prepare for treatment? Well, these are injections. Um, a, peel, a chemical peel has a, a, another set of preparation, but in terms of the injections or prior to surgery, we try to limit any blood thinning agents beforehand, such as aspirin, high doses of ibuprofen, green teas, um, those thin the blood and the patients tend to have more bruising and swelling if they take those. We have a list on our website of uh, precautions to take. But generally speaking, you know, a healthy lifestyle, a uh, healthy diet, adequate hydration, adequate sleep, good sun protection goes a long way in preparation for this treatment, but also goes a long way in terms of uh, skin health and, and overall health. How do we reduce discomfort? Um, good question. Uh, most of the discomfort is uh, anxiety, really. Patients are apprehensive about the expectations. You know, the lip has a lot of nerve endings and it's a little bit more sensitive as compared to Botox, let's say in the forehead. But uh, we put a numbing cream, apply that for several minutes beforehand. So patients, if you uh, come about 10, 15 minutes before their appointment, they get a numbing cream. In addition, we can uh, do a nerve block uh, to really make them completely numb. You'll still feel us touching the lips or a cleaning of the lips, but in terms of discomfort, it goes away. And as we do lip treatments, there's numbing medication in the filler. So as we work, it becomes a little bit more and more numb. Um, how long is downtime? Well, after any kind of filler or peel, non-surgical treatment, usually we'll say a couple days, maybe up to a week to two weeks for things to settle. At that point, we can reassess and see if you need more tweaks or touch-ups. After surgery, most of this healing, after any kind of surgery, whether it's the nose, the eyes, the lips, most of the healing takes two weeks. That's when about 50% more or less heals. But it really takes two or three months for about 80, 90% of healing to occur after surgery. And it takes a full year for a quote unquote final healing after uh, plastic surgery. When can you exercise? Usually wait one day after non-surgical treatments, uh, one to two weeks after any kind of surgery. And uh, similar to makeup, you know, after fillers, injections, you know, you could wear makeup maybe the same night. After chemical peel, we'll wait uh, maybe a week to two weeks. I want to see the skin heal, the skin surface heal before you apply makeup. After surgery, we wait at least a week maybe two weeks. Again, I like to see you, see where you are in the healing process, and then I guide you when is, when is appropriate to resume healing. I mean, uh, makeup and exercise. And then uh, how do the lips feel after treatment? Good question. You know, quite honestly, I, uh, it's best to ask patients, um, themselves, we haven't had a patient tell us they it feels unnatural. Initially, it's going to feel unnatural because of the numbing medication. For those first couple hours, it's going to feel, feel different. But after a few hours, they really feels like your normal lip. Um, Rachel, do you want to add anything to that? You can unmute yourself here. Yes, thank you, Dr. Chiboki. Um, I think I can speak on behalf of the lip filler side of it. Um, a lot of patients, uh, they might, if they swell, depending on um, their own personal swelling and bruising, they might have discomfort similar to if you had a bruise anywhere else on your body. Um, also lips, because they expanded and um, got a little bit bigger, your skin will be a little bit tighter. You might have dry lips. Um, so I always encourage using Aquaphor or Vaseline for at least a week on the lips after getting lip filler, because that can kind of be uncomfortable and unexpected. Um, other than that, they generally aren't painful. Um, they settle. Uh, they don't, I wouldn't say that they hurt to eat or anything of that nature. Um, so it's not really a bad recovery. And most people after getting lip filler will be what we call restaurant ready in about two weeks. But once again, it really just depends on 
uh, their own personal bruising and swelling. Yeah. And what do you, what do you advise uh, patients regarding makeup after filler or Botox or relaxer injections? What, what do you, how do you advise patients? Yeah. So for any Botox treatment, I, you can technically put uh, makeup on later that evening. We will clean the skin before we do it. And then afterwards, so you just want to keep it as clean as you can. Uh, I would always encourage wash your face before you do, and then take your makeup off, be, makeup off before you go to bed. But for Botox specifically, I do say if you have a dinner that evening, it's okay to put a little bit on. Now for filler, I encourage no makeup for at least 24 hours, just because um, the injection is deeper and there's more of them. So I will clean the area again before and continuously throughout the filler itself uh, while you're getting it. But I always say to try and leave all makeup off for at least 24 hours. If you do need anything, I say lipstick is fine after a day. And most people, if they're going somewhere, they actually will put lipstick on to kind of cover up any bruising that they might have. All right, all right, good points, good points. And then, yeah, sim similarly, you know, we're a big fan of uh, aqua or Vaseline after surgery, whether it's a facelift or a lip lift, and patients are using Vaseline here after a lip lift for a couple of weeks after to minimize any scarring. And really, the scars fade with time. We haven't had a patient complain about a scar after any kind of uh, facial plastic surgery that we do here, that we do here, whether it's the eyes or the, or the nose or the lips. Good. Well, I think that's all the time we have now. Thank you for everyone who's joined us and uh, thank you for the team at Potomac Plastic Surgery. It's been, it's been a pleasure. And again, our next quarterly webinar will be in a few months. Uh, you know, Sign up for our newsletter, follow us on social media and uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye everyone.